Yo, what's up, Swag? And you already know what time it is, man. It's your boy, Keon Lord, a.k.a. KL Swag. Back here with a video, man. Look, man. This is big, you guys. TPS. This is 10 wide receivers that went from superstar to forgettable overnight. Let's check it out. Superstar wide receivers are kind of like flashy, explosive. Oh, damn. Bro, Devontae Adams is not doing that to me. But hey, man, let's see what receivers he's talking about, though, bro. Wide receivers have long been known for their superstar-like personas in the NFL, but because they are generally so reliant on their athleticism, it's not too uncommon to see a guy who was once a star in the league torching defenses left and right to all of a sudden become utterly forgettable. Okay. Let's take a look back at 10 NFL wideouts who were former superstars that quickly became afterthoughts overnight. First up, we got former Packers verbal wideout Julian Nelson. Oh, hell yeah. 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 Hell Half as many receiving yards and matched his two regular season touchdowns in just a quarter of the game. Damn! Having earned Aaron Rodgers' trust on the biggest stage, the following year he put up huge numbers, notching 1,263 yards and 15 touchdowns, mm. absolutely smashing his previous career highs of 582 and two respectively. And from that point on, almost any time Rodgers needed a big completion, it was a borderline park on conclusion where it was going. Number 87 and 3 to go. Between 2011 and 2016, he was a college did he come from? His best year, which bizarrely was his only pro season, came in 2014. He held in 98 catches for 1,519 yards and 30 Damn. touchdowns. But beyond that, he was the pinnacle of the wide rail. The only year during that stretch in which he had less than 1,257 yards came in 2012. And hey, look, you guys, I know I need a retwist. I know I need a retwist, okay? Chill out. Chill out. In 2015, when he missed the entire season with an ACL tear. He did, however, bounce back the following Hey, I did get a haircut, though. Hey! <laughs> yeah. Swaggy. Hey, yeah, yeah. There was no denying that for a stretch, Nelson was one of the most feared and respected wide receivers. For real? Damn, I didn't know that. I wasn't watching football like that back then. I'm just a kid, bro. Rodgers missed about half the season due to injury, and Nelson's production loved it. The following offseason, he signed a deal with the head Oakland Raiders, but he was clearly not the same force that he had been all those years with Rodgers. Mm. It was hard to say that he was not really forgettable. And apparently, Nelson felt his best days were behind him as well, because at the conclusion of the 2018 season, he retired. Now, interestingly, this is not too dissimilar to what we saw play out with another legendary Packers wide receiver, Donald Driver. For years, I think I did hear about him. They say he was fast as hell. In the bulk of his career, he was catching passes from Brett Favre before finishing up the twilight of his career with Rodgers. But nevertheless, he, like Jordan Nelson, earned more than his fair share of Lambo leaps over the years. Damn. Driver also broke out in his fourth year in Green Bay, catching seven passes for 1,064 yards and one touchdown. Ooh. Pretty pleasant surprise for the Packers, considering they only invested a seventh round pick for him. Well, oh my god, seven! Damn, he got all about to say he got hawked down. I was about to say. And that was before passing numbers truly started to become good. Now, that being said, for the last couple of years of his career, Driver was a little more than a veteran presence among the young receiving corps. His numbers. Rodgers done play with all the prime time receivers. Damn, damn. He went lower and lower each of the last three seasons of his career until he finally called it quits in 2013 after 14 seasons all in. This was a bizarrely similar career trajectory to that of one of his contemporaries, Roddy White, who also played his entire career with one organization. Damn. This time it was the Atlanta Falcons. 
quite been successful a little earlier in his career than Flyboy Nelson, pretty on year three after I heard of Roddy White. Bordering on this appointing freshman and sophomore campaign, considering that he was a first round pick. Nevertheless, though, once his third season rolled around, he became a true star. And he walking 1,000 plus yard receiving sheet. Okay, 39 top 100. Is that good or bad? I don't know. Okay. Oh, that's good. Isn't that the NFL receptions? Roddy lasted three more seasons in the NFL before he ripped it off into an understated retirement. Damn. Damn. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's forgettable overnight. I mean, not really. People talk about him all the time. Julio was truly one of the top three wide receivers in the NFL. And it's largely been that way since the Falcons took him sixth overall in the 2011 NFL draft at Alabama. Every year that Julio played Games, First round too. Well over yards. Yeah, I mean, he's a Hall of Famer, I say. What you what you guys think? Y'all think he's a Hall of Famer? And that was with him missing a game. By team of every measurable. Who is a sure fire hole thing? At least he will be once he retires. And DK way bigger than him. Because Jones. Well, Jones is lost the stuff. Yes, he can barely stay on the field at this point. Literally. It's really is a shame because during his prime, he was absolutely one of the most exciting wide receivers in the game. And now, well, he's completely forgettable. I bet half you don't remember that he's not even on the Falcons anymore. Why are you so less than a Julio Jones, your fellow 2010 superstar receiver, E.J. Green. I got a jersey AJ Green, but he was like that. Playing less than 10 games for the first time in his pro career. And the following year, things only got worse. As during training camp, he suffered torn ligaments in his ankle that eventually cost him the entirety of the season. In his two years since returning from injury, Green just hasn't looked like the same player. Not only is his production and performance rather forgettable, but he's almost unrecognizable on the field these days. It feels like the days of his impossibly regular I'll lock him up. are well behind him. Now, is this going to be another guy for the remainder of his career? Again, I guess it's because a lot of wide receivers are so reliant on their athleticism that it shouldn't be a surprise that we've seen so many stars at the position. Hey, yeah. I feel like Joe Galloway is a great example. I don't know who that is. Some younger NFL fans out there might not know this, but yeah. back in his day, Joe Galloway was actually one of the most explosive wide receivers in the NFL. Really? Before the overall pick at Ohio State, actually ran an unofficial 4.18 second 40 yard dash. Damn. Which may not be recognized by the NFL, but hey, it is still wildly impressive. Tony, yeah, you better catch him. I would have caught him. I was about to say he ran out of bounds. Kind of forced him out of bounds. Narrowly missing out 96 by just 16 yards. And that was for some rather middling Seattle Seahawks team. Galloway battled through Where's the Cowboy? Look at that jerseys back in the day, bro. So ugly. He big though for a receiver. Like a running back. After that, it was over for Galloway quick. During his last three years in the NFL, he made it. ain't catch him. Oh, he scored. Trash. Not even topping 200 yards a season once. Galloway made the mistake that we've seen a couple of other big snow receivers make. He went to New England, helping to replicate the resurgence that Randy Moss had with Brady Belichick, not realizing how intense the Patriot Lady would be. Oh, he got cut. Oh, my Patriots. 
My Patriots cut Seattle, him. Joseph, 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 and Reggie Wayne both knew that feeling. Like. Oh, that's crazy, bro. He had a mohawk? What the hell? He was only able to earn three starts, and he caught just 15 passes during the regular season. That's a far cry from the star we saw torturing the defensive backs across the NFL during the early to mid 2000s. What? There's speculation that Chad's decline stemmed from a lack of focus, perhaps as a result of issues off the field. But it definitely looked like he lost his step as well. And just could create separation from opposing quarterbacks the way he used to. Interestingly, Reggie Wayne's prime was more impressive, and his fall was even greater. After Wayne's breakout season in 2003, the only year that he recorded less than 1,000 yards in 2011, which was his first year without Peyton Manning. During which he was subjected to a pitiful play of Kurt Painter, Dan Orlovsky, and Kerry Collins. Wow. Talk about a shock to the system after playing in a Peyton Manning led offense for all those years. Now, Wayne, to his credit, did bounce back during Andrew Watts rookie season the following year. Okay. 1,355 yards and five touchdowns. Damn, he got hit. He didn't score, though. This proved to be his star for now. Oh, he did score, did he? Over the next couple of years, before he tried his luck in New England during 2015, only get cut in early September. Damn, everybody getting cut for the Patriots. Yeah, they don't like, they don't like my Patriots, bro. I'd make it though if I was on, um, if I was a defensive player, I'd make it. Playing safety for the Patriots, man, they love me. Ah, Brandon Marshall. Because he was one of the most physically imposing wide receivers that the NFL had ever seen. Yeah, he was. So much so that former NFL quarterback Brandon Flowers once described him as a defensive lineman playing wide receiver who simply wanted to inflict punishment. The six time pro bowler, however, only vanished just one year removed from putting up monster numbers during his first year as a New York Jet in 2015. He went from 1,502 yards and 14 touchdowns to 788 and 3 before totaling a measly 290 yards and 1 touchdown over his last two NFL seasons with the Los Town rival Giants and the Seahawks. Seahawks. Marshall was serviceable, but expendable. Gone was a superstar who had defensive backs reserving the full tub for regular matches for him. Now, during the biggest hell. years, Dad Bryant, who possessed a muscular 6'2 inch ring to go along with a 38 inch vertical jump, also inflicted plenty of punishment in his own right. He led the NFL in touchdowns in 2014. Made three pro bowls, one first team all pro, and was. Dad Bryant was lightning, especially was when he was hitting the X. You're out. What? After his all pro season in 2014, Dez completely fell off a cliff and became an afterthought in the Cowboys offense. He went for three straight seasons of 12 plus touchdowns, including that league leading total of 16 in 2014, to averaging less than five per season towards the end of his career. It wasn't that he was unplayable or anything like that, but it was clear that his best days were well behind. And he was just yet another star wide receiver who ungracefully drifted out of his time and into insignificance. But which NFL wide receiver Damn. do you think had the most dramatic fall from grace? Hey, man, that's crazy, bro. Y'all let me know down below in the comments, bro, who was the worst to you guys, man. And I miss y'all coming back to you guys, bro. We have a little conversation on there, bro. And I'm sorry, you guys. I will be streaming. Um... Hopefully this weekend, bro. I'll be streaming this weekend for you guys, bro. So we're going to turn up, man. I love you guys. I'll see you guys next video. If you made it this far, man, yo, you so real.